In this analysis, we're turning our attention to a dynamic player in the toy industry. We'll closely examine a toy company stock that's been making significant strides. From analyzing its financial health to understanding its competitive edge in a changing market, this video is designed to provide a comprehensive view of its investment potential. Join me as we dissect the factors that could make this stock a valuable addition to a savvy investor's portfolio. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, I'm Cody Cook, a 25-year veteran investor, former hedge fund trader, and business owner, and on my channel, I try to make my investors money by bringing them investment ideas like this one. So today we're going to talk about JAX Pacific, ticker symbol J-A-K-K. -K. It was founded in 1995. It designs, produces, markets, sells, and distributes toys, related products, kids, indoor and outdoor furniture, and other consumer products worldwide. It operates through two primary segments, toys, consumer products, and costumes. It's a pretty simple business model. First, they license intellectual property. Then they design toys and playthings around that intellectual property. They have it manufactured overseas, primarily in China, with third-party manufacturers. Then they sell it predominantly to the United States, mostly through Target and Walmart stores. More recently, they've begun to move away from this model a little bit because of its inherent instability, and we will discuss this in a moment. Okay, so how I found this stock is I ranked all stocks by their earnings yield. Stocks with the highest earnings yield got the highest ranking. Then I ranked all stocks by the return on invested capital. Stocks with the highest return on invested capital got the highest ranking. I then combined these two rankings and overall looked at the stocks that had the highest highest overall rankings. Then from there, I picked through it based upon a number of factors and came up with a few stocks I really liked, and Jax is one of them. Stocks that match these traits on average have returned somewhere between 15 and 20% on their money since the 1970s. So let's get into analyzing its financials. Now, first thing you can see, its annual revenues going back to 2018. It's been a steady overall increase, a little bit of ups and downs. It declined a bit in 2020 due to COVID, but overall it's been up. Estimates for 2023 and 2024 show that overall sales will be roughly flat from where they are today. As you can see here, the earnings per share have significantly proved over the last five years. Jax had had some hard times a number of years ago, but they've successfully turned them around. And as you can see, overall earnings per share should be roughly flat in the next coming couple of years. Next, let's look at revenues. You can see revenues for the most part have been flat over the last 10 years. They've gone up a bit and down a bit, but overall they've been consistently flat. However, the gross profit has significantly improved over those years. This is due to efficiencies that Jax has put in place and been able to lower their overall overall cost of goods sold. Down here, you can see the net income have significantly improved as well. And this is again due to their cost savings. Balance sheet looks pretty good. They have a good amount of cash, about $96 million worth of cash. Total assets are about $378 million. They really have paid off a lot of debt. They don't carry a lot of long-term debt. Total liabilities are about $310 million. Most of that is in accounts payable, which is mean they're taking time to pay their suppliers. As for its profitability, Jax is looking pretty decent compared to what it was just five years ago. It's also looking better than most of its industry peers. As you can see here, Jax is in the top 10% for overall return on total capital relative to its industry peers. Now let's talk about its valuation. Jax is selling around three to five times earnings. It's estimated to be selling around five times next year's earnings. Compare this to its historical five-year PE ratio of around 11 or 12 times earnings. Jax is selling about half of what it could potentially be selling for compared to its own history. Next, I'd like to look at enterprise value compared to earnings before interest and taxes or EV versus EBT. This is known as the acquirer's multiple, showing about a 3 to a 3.75 times. Now here's the usefulness of the acquirer's multiple. If we went out there to buy the entire company, we paid off all of its debt, then paid back ourselves cash the company currently held, then we would pay about 3.7 times the company's current earnings before interest and taxes. Now that is quite low. Considering the vast majority of stocks on the stock exchange typically sell somewhere between 10 and 20 times their acquirer's multiple, this is a very undervalued stock based upon this metric. This does actually increase the chance that Jax will be acquired potentially by a competitor at some time in the near future. In fact, if we compare the acquirer's multiple of Jax over the last 10 years, you can see that it was around 10 times earnings on average over the last five years just for Jax itself. So the stock is selling almost a third of what it potentially could be selling for using this as a multiple. Now, when you compare the valuation of Jax compared to its industry as a whole, out of 85 companies, it's the second cheapest in terms of its valuation based upon its trailing PE ratio. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so let's check out the stock over the last five years. The stock's up around 22% from five years ago. It's gone through a bit of a dip. It got down to around $3.45 at one point, and recently it's hit its five-year high of around $28 a share. It spiked up from around $16 quite recently, literally in the last few weeks, because its performance is done so well more recently. Now, typically I do not like buying stocks that have recently risen so much, but I've also been investing and trading for a long time, and this is a sign of momentum. And believe it or not, stocks 
stocks that actually show this kind of positive momentum that are also quite undervalued like this outperform the overall S&P 500 quite significantly. Okay, so the major risks that are involved in this and why the company is so undervalued. First major risk is that licensing deals are highly dependent upon blockbuster movies and games. So for example, let's say a Disney movie's coming out. Jacks will license intellectual property from Disney for that movie. They will then build toys around the Disney characters in that movie. They will often launch these toys before or the very day the movie comes out. Now, if the movie is not very successful, then the toys will generally not be very successful and Jacks will be out a lot of money and have to sell the toys on a deep discount. On the other hand, if the movie is a big hit, then typically Jack's toys will be a big hit and the company will make a lot of money. The problem with this is it's incredibly difficult to know ahead of the time what movies and games will be the most popular. A second major risk is the overall economy. Naturally, toys are a bit of a luxury and so when things get a little bit tight on everybody, they stop spending so much money on luxury items and leisurely items and so it can affect overall revenues and profits. So in order to fix these major risks, more recently Jax has been focusing more of its energy on designing its own toys that will be unrelated to the intellectual property of other companies. In addition, they've been paying off a large amount of their debt. More recently, they're going to build up a bit of a cash reserve and this should help overall volatility in their business go down a bit to protect them from bad economic times. Now my investment thesis is based on the idea as long as Jax keeps up what it's been doing in the past, it doesn't need any big blockbusters, just stays relatively steady. I think it's an excellent opportunity to produce nice profits over the coming few years by simply holding Jacks and enjoying the profitability the company produces. Now let's get into some scenario analysis to try to evaluate the potential returns we can make off this stock. So first off, let's start with the worst case scenario. Let's estimate there's a 5% chance the stock could go to zero, which means we would have about 100% loss. Next, I estimate about a 15% chance the stock could go down by about 50%. For a variety of reasons, this could happen. Stock market could go down overall. The company could have a bag run of toys that do not sell very well. There's a number of things that could occur here, but I'm estimate it's about a 15% chance. Next, let's estimate there's about a 30% chance the stock could fall by about 20%. This could be caused by a number of factors as well. Overall economy could easily make a stock dip down by that much in a matter of a few months. Now on a more positive note, let's estimate there's a 30% chance the stock could go up by about 50% from where it is today, considering that I think it's quite undervalued. Next, I estimate there's a 15% chance the stock could double from where it is today due to its significant undervaluation. It's producing a nice amount of profit. And finally, the long shot is about a 5% chance the stock could go up by 400% from where it is now. That would put the stock at about $140 per share. Why do I think that? It's because it's so undervalued relative to its acquirers multiple. It's possible the stock could rise quite a bit. Maybe it gets bought out at some point. It's got a long way to go compared to its peers and even compared to itself just a few years ago. So because of this extreme undervaluation, in my opinion, this is what I'm going to estimate its potential. Now you take all of these statistics, throw them into a pot, and the estimated expected return is around 31.5% over the next year or two in this stock. All right, so let's get into risk management. For this particular play, there's only really one way to manage risk, and that is with your position sizing. I would recommend putting no more than 5 to 10% of your portfolio into the stock. The statistics get thrown off too much when you increase your position size much above that. As for an exit strategy, I would recommend buying the stock and holding it for a little past one full year. You will get tax benefits for doing that. You'll get capital gains taxes, plus it gives it time for the stock to mature and the investment thesis to work itself out. As for trade execution, bid ask spreads can be quite expensive. Anywhere on average, they cost about a half a percent to a full percentage point on what you're investing. If you use a good trade execution, it can actually help you lower that cost down to zero. I would typically recommend a limit to buy order below the prevailing bid. Just leave it in there for a few days. There's a 90 plus percent chance that it'll get filled. If it's not filled, give it a little bit of time, see if it's filled and readjust the limit to buy order later on if it's not filled within a week or two. If you don't wanna mess with all that, you can simply do a buy on close order and you're pretty much assured to get filled. Next, to manage your psychology and investment, in this case, what you can do is after you buy it, simply put a calendar alert link on your phone for a little bit past one full year. That alert should simply say, hey, check out your Jack's investment. And then from there, you can go ahead and look at it and analyze it. In the meantime, don't even look at the stock. It just creates a lot of stress no matter what's going on in the stock because you are following the system by simply leaving it alone in the meantime. So in this video, I did a deep dive into the stock of Jack Pacific. But in a previous video, I did a deep analysis of a very undervalued retail company called Academy Sports and Outdoors. You can watch that video here. If you would like to get more investment ideas like this, please hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.